Uh, Jim, December 30, 2014, you introduced Jim Harbaugh as Michigan's new head football coach. On Monday, he leads them to the national championship game. Is this what you envisioned? Well, I can't believe it's been nine years, Jack. I mean, it went so fast, and yet uh, it is what I envisioned. In fact, I had three things. One is beat the Buckeyes. <laughs> Two was beat the Buckeyes. <laughs> and, and the third was, you know, win the Big Ten championship because in 2014, the playoffs were just beginning. So I really hadn't had the experience of, you know, of uh, all of us watching that happen. But this is, this is pretty special. You know, it's often said that coaches are a reflection of the coaches they played for. And like you, he played for Bo Schembechler. Do you see Bo in him? I absolutely do. And it's around the nature of how Bo taught us all to be so competitive. You know, competitive in a way that Bo believed if you worked really hard, good things could, could happen. Now, the definition of what working hard means has changed since Bo uh, was the head coach. And Jim gives lots of credit to that, that uh, weightlifting coach that he has uh, that's changed the whole dynamics of getting them ready. But I also, Jack, have to say that I see his father, Jim's father, mm -hmm. in Jim. And Jack Harbaugh, who was an assistant coach when I played there um, at Michigan, uh, Jack is an extremely optimistic guy, very positive. And he creates in Jim this sense of anything's possible, you know, almost, almost like a childlike op child optimism. So I'm really proud of that. What do you think Bo would say about this team and, and the job that Jim has done? Well, I know he's smiling in heaven, and, and it's because Bo's really proud of, you know, winning championships by, by defense. That's always one of Bo's precepts. The other one, though, is he really believed in that offensive line, and Jim and, and Sharon Moore and others have, have been working really hard on that in the last eight years. And... And so we've got a great, uh, you know, a great program that has great linemen, great uh, tailbacks now, uh, world-class quarterbacks. You know, all of that is paying off. You ran Michigan's athletic department for a couple of years. What does a run like this mean for a university? The definition of a great program is what we're witnessing now at Michigan. And, and, and why that definition matters is it, it helps in sustaining the edge as you as you you know as you go on in years, so it helps recruiting. It helps um, when 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 a player uh, gets injured or something happens to to them, the the next person steps up. And there's you know that's really been helpful this year, and, and in fact in this run to have such depth. The third thing though is that the whole university, uh, and this is true you know of of all colleges, why college sports is so special. They live in the moment with that team. So it just brings everybody's spirit up, and it's, it's such a rewarding time. I would imagine it's uh, pretty good for all the fundraisers as well at, at a time like this. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, the interesting stat when I, when I was there uh, nine years ago, we started to see the enrollment actually go up, you know, uh, in, in terms of applications. And, of course, the donations followed, and... And that's just pride in the, you know, in the university. And it makes it uh, really important when you understand that in addition to these championships, the graduation level right now in the football program is the highest ever in terms of the number of students who start and they finish with a degree at Michigan. So that's just as important. This is the third straight year NFL teams have shown interest uh, in Jim Harbaugh. When he was hired, he said he wanted to build a house and stay in it forever. Do you think Michigan can keep him this time around? Well, I believe that, you know, a man like Jim is honors his word. And he um, he really did great things in terms of of uh, of that seven year contract that I signed with him. I mean, he he did everything that I asked him to do. So I believe uh, that Jim is an honorable guy. The second thing is, though, this is a very dynamic world. You know, the market is looking for great football coaches. And he's in that rarefied air, you know, of people that I knew. I knew Paul Brown. I knew uh, Bo Schembechler. I knew Woody Hayes. 
Uh, I think Nick Saban, of course, is in that rarefied air. And Jim is in a very elite group of, of football coaches. So that makes him, you know, really special. And, and as a result, I believe the athletic director at Michigan and the president of the university are doing everything they can to be an advocate for him staying. And I know Jim feels that. I mean, I just know that. Now the question is, is where does this fit in his destiny? Um, for me, I'd love to see him stay at Michigan. I mean, that's that's really what it's all about for me. But, but I also see that if he goes to the pros, this is a guy that's a future Hall of Famer. And so can you imagine his life in terms of a kind of a narrative where he finishes his career one day and he's, he's put in Canton uh, as a Hall of Famer on that side. So, you know, these things are complex when you, when you think about somebody's life. And all I can do is reflect on he did everything that he told me he would do. You've run companies, and I'm sure you've dealt with plenty of distractions. How has he managed to keep this thing on track with all of the distractions that have surrounded this program this year? Jack, you've, you've spent your whole life covering athletes and sports, and I know you could, you could note this, is that the ones that seem to perform at the highest level have this ability to focus. Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, Tom Brady, and Jim is just like them. When I was around him, um, the ability to focus, the ability to be really intense on the task uh, matters a great deal. But I also would have to say, because you've, you've given me this moment, um, that I don't think that the world really understands this whole sign decoding thing. I don't think it's all been clarified about what was commonly being done or is being done in sport. And, and then at what part did it, did it, you know, did it breach any trust or any rules? I know from talking to him, he didn't know about it. He, he's a man of extreme integrity. His parents are, he's a devout, you know, Catholic. I mean, the guy just lives his life with uh, high principles. So, so if, if that's true, which I believe it is, then, then these things aren't really distractions because you know who you are as these things come at you and they really can't knock him off his feet. I do hope that the commissioner learns from the experience though of involving all the other coaches to make the assessment and then didn't even talk to Jim. I mean, Jim didn't spend any time uh, with the commissioner explaining his view of what goes on with sign decoding. Now that will all come out as they try to reform this, but as a CEO, Jack, I'm gonna tell you and where I came from in the automotive industry, machine learning or AI is only gonna make this more difficult um, because the computer can be reading things and giving coaches uh, you know, real time insight. So we've gotta figure out a whole new system uh, for sending plays in and out. That's good wisdom there. How much change have you seen in him from the day you hired him until now? And how much do leaders need to embrace change? It's one of the key components and building blocks of growth. And even those names I gave you, the, the Woody Hayes, the Paul Brown, the Nick Sabans, all of these people, if we could map their career, have grown. In fact, I have witnessed this with Jim and I didn't, I knew him when he was 13 years old. I should mention when I played in the Rose Bowl in 1977, he was with his brother John outside the hotel throwing the ball around. And and so, but I didn't I didn't know him obviously in those intervening years until we we got together nine years ago. And what I've witnessed is this is a man whose achievement, you know, mattered, but he has shifted to a different ladder than his own. He cares so so deeply about those around him that they get what they want, that they attain the kind of standards that that uh, Jim hopes for, for his players. And so this is why when you see him being interviewed, he doesn't want but two seconds. And he really wants to bring that, that player on the screen because that's in service of them. They've got their whole life in front of them. And Jim's grown in, in terms of being selfless that way. So I really, I love that about him. You're a Michigan man. What does this mean to Michigan men like yourself to see your team play for a national championship? I had dinner uh, two nights ago with a number of my teammates. Dennis Franklin was the first African-American quarterback at Michigan and two years older than me. We had dinner with some other teammates. And uh, I said this at the table as we were going around just talking about our lives. And I said, I've never been closer to, to, to anybody in my life other than my kids, my wife, and my teammates. 
So it's it's the state of a relationship that's really hard to explain to other people. And so what it means to me is to watch them make this journey together and become a complete team is just so fulfilling. It's just a state of, of uh, success that humans should experience in their life, to have that sense of what it's like to be on a team. And uh, last thing for you, Jim, what do you think happens on Monday, Michigan versus Washington? What color confetti will be flying at the end and why? Jack, you know, when you look at the last game, um, that's a chess match played on a field that's 120 yards long and like 54 yards wide. And it feel like, felt like they just played that on that field, you know, in a small square in the Rose Bowl. In like a like a fight in a phone booth. This is this is going to use every square yard of that field, and so the ball is going to be going a lot of different places. But don't forget, we have a quarterback in, that can throw it around like that outstanding quarterback of that other team. So it's just going to be another great game. The key here is the standards of of excellence to get ready and be up for that game after so much happened positive just a few days ago. That's really hard for in a human motivational way to, to get all that energy back that you just had. But I believe the leader, Jim Harbaugh, knows how to do that. And so I'm very optimistic about our chances.